ensure that his team will go on with it. And of course, there are times where this leads to a bit of a questionable result. But of course, when the whole team is united, when the coach understands that his players has his back, that is where the team can shine the most. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we are back to the drafting phase, the banning phase for game number one. It's RRQ Hoshi. They're the home team on the blue side, on the play. They get the pick. First up, banning out the Kaja, the Benedetta, and the Eve. While well, Blacks International answers back. They got the two picks on the red side, banning out the Wan Wan and the Franco. I think White's open right here. Carries wide open. There's also that blue potential pick. I feel like some of the teams have already started to realize that yes, carry is a must pick, a must ban. But there are counters. Like for example, the Harry, for example, the Lunox. Right now, Blacklist International. There's some MCQ that they need to solve. Ooh, I mean, I'm wondering if you're gonna see something crazy. We we already mentioned earlier, both these teams have signature heroes, signature playstyles, but as Jace was mentioning. The longer this tournament is going on, the more it seems like flexibility okay. becomes key. And now, with all these strong quote-unquote heroes banned away, are we going to see something unusual? Or are we going to see the classic power picks, considering that this is only game number one, and as the first pick, it's going to be that joy? That's a hero that rarely comes through, right? Usually you see it banned, and just in the recent days of the knockout stage is when Joy started to run rampant. Mo literally, when you watch the hero, right? Mostly in the XP lane, but the answer by Blacks International, they put Haji, the KDA machine, on the Farsa. Again, setting up that box in the absence of the Eve, and then they pick up the blue. So there's a good amount of dive and just blocking potential for that box that they want in the team fights. I think it's instead of the box, it's like a circle, Leo, right? But apart from that, I am actually very surprised that RRQ did not prioritize the glue. It's mostly going in for the joy. Now, I think we're starting to see some of the pro players starting to realize that, hey, the joy is kind of melting on the XP lane. But of course, I think currently we're not too sure whether this Joy will be going into the jungle or Joy going into the EXP lane. Hopefully it's R7 that will be playing it. Now as the pick phase counts down, we need to see which is the best in slot for the sun. It is an Albert on the Fanny and the Hilda. It's a Fanny and a Hilda and a Joy. That is a lot of early game pressure. Considering RRQ, they want to go and start snowballing. This is a composition that can work. We talked a bit about that glue, and as well as the joy and the possibility of okay. flexing it around. And there's still chances available here, but for Blacklist, that is that signature asset showing up in the first game of the match. Usually, for Blacklist International, this is where you start seeing the Estes, at least in their previous performances here at M4. They're so gung-ho and ready to just pick the Estes right when they're ready, and they're so decisive about it this time around. And I like it. This is a, a growth for the world champions because, again, they needed to grow in the past three months given how much of a struggle they had in recent international championships. I'm talking about ISF Valley. I'm talking about MPLI. So now they're trying to redeem themselves. Definitely redemption is the king here. Well, queen here, mind you. But from the other side, oh my Venus, you know, going in the Estes, you're expecting Y to go for this very tanky front line. It's up to RRQ to realize it. Ban away the Barats, ban away the Frederick. I think these are the top bans from the side of RRQ. But Blacklist bans away the Kadita. They ban away the Kadita, understanding that they are susceptible to just getting combo, getting dove in the back line. Dagger. And honestly, it does seem like RRQ has so much aggression already available. The last thing they, the Blacklist wants is to deal with a very elusive roamer or mid lane like the Kadita. So right now, Barats has been banned away as well. For RRQ, with so much mobility, with so much burst potential, if they can deny the tankier members, the beefier heroes from the side of Blacklist, they can get success in that early game. Yeah, and again, on screen, it's the Filipino sniper himself, the M3 Grand Finals MVP, Ooh. Oheb, with a very powerful coat, words of I'd say competition <laughs> for <laughs> the King of Kings. Good luck. We will destroy you. Well, it's going to be tough because, again, the first three picks from RQ are already very strong. Very rarely do we see a lineup that has the Joy and the Fanny in the first phase. Now, wrapping up their draft. What's Skylar to pick? There goes the Harith. What's left? Ooh. Yes. The Harith banned down. I mean, there's still potential. Depending, it's, it's so difficult right now because it really depends on what you want to go for. We've seen that, for example, the Lunox can come into the gold lane, but that depends, right? Are they going to try and go for early game burst damage? Because then it makes a bit of sense if they need a bit more magic damage as well. But otherwise, they might just go with something a bit more safe, something with some range, something with a bit more kite potential. 
Jays, are you thinking this should be the Frederick? Because if not, I can expect Blackers to just snap pick it as soon as yeah, we come definitely. back. Yeah, definitely. If this ban is not the Frederick, it will be snap picked by Indus on the Blacklist. But that's also another thing that RQ has also considered the fact that the Beatrix might know it's going to be the box that gets taken away instead. I like what RQ is thinking as well. Yes, there could be a Frederick pick going in, but I think the Beatrix will be better, in my opinion, for the side of Blacklist. But it's going to be the Brody instead. This is unusual coming off of Blacklist. They're keeping him thinking. And uh, yeah, again, the Brody is a pretty solid when you have uh, joy in your face, when yep. you have a 1 1 in your face. Yep, joy and in your face. You can expect that uh, the baby alien, Fanny, uh, Albert, will be going wherever he can find Oheb or Haji. I mean, even Oh My Venus. I mean, it's a good pick if you want to try and kite back, have a bit more self-protection, right, on that marksman roll that's usually very vulnerable. But now, that means that for our Q, they can count on the fact that there's very limited amount of DPS coming in from the set of Blacklist. They have burst damage, so pick-up potential, but in the longer drawn-out fights, this Hilda might just be too beefy to, to whittle down, to melt down by Blacklist. I think another thing that we also have to talk about is Wise's uh, jungler. It is going to be RRQ that locks in the final drop, a Faramis and a Claude. Something that could counteract against the hue of Estes, but there you go, a Fredrin finalizing the drop of Blacklist. They didn't need to rush the Fredrin. I mean, if yeah. the writing is on the wall, you know what's up, this is the right timing for it. Now that we've seen both lineups, I have to say, the Faramis in mid for our Kyoshi, it's gonna be very 50-50. Like, if it works, it works amazing. It makes sure that they undo the damage that possibly the sustained Estes brings to the table. But if not, it's just gonna act as another possible re-engage. I think another thing that RQ could play this is that Faramis is not meant to basically win the lane. It is usually the Fanny that, you know, wins the mid lane by hard, uh, being playing aggressive in the mid lane very early on. So a lot on the shoulders of the baby alien. Yeah, man. Arashi, what do you think? Ooh, I think in the early game, there's so much potential. It's such a pr an oppressive composition. They are tanky, they have decent amounts of base damage, and they have a cult altar to facilitate crazier plays. If Blackness does not curb that aggression, they might be looking at disaster. Let's go into the land of dawn for game one in this best of five. Let me hear a big Viva RRQ and break the code. <laughs> Let's make sure that our athletes get the best experience first. We'll need uh, to iron out some kinks in this competition. Uh, gives us time, though, to digest and, of course, allow yeah, what a, like, our, uh... our crowd to let it in. Let, 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 the, let the atmosphere in. I mean, the atmosphere, we've said it again and again, but we just have to keep restating it. It is crazy right now. Yeah. Fortunately, we have had to cancel out the noise, but we can still hear them through. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. I can only imagine what it's like for our players. And again, that's why folks at home, uh, and again, everyone here in the stadium, uh, we want to make sure that they have the best experience, all the decisions that they make, all the equipment, and all the things that they need to be able to compete at the highest level are set for them and that's why we need to wait just a little bit more. Jace, talk to me more about how maybe it's on the Fanny this time to help win that mid lane because that's a main artery. What's yes. that going to mean for Blacklist International if it does work out? So I feel like right now Blacklist has to ask this question, uh, has to answer this question, right? Where is this Estes going to go? Are you going to protect the Brody or are you going to protect that Farsa? Personally, I feel like Blacklist should prioritize protecting the Farsa because I think the Feather Airstrike is a very big utility towards your early games. Whereas Brody, no offense to all have, right? Um, he all his role is just to push down turrets and Claude, on the other hand, doesn't have a lot of clear kill pressure. So maybe that's what Blacklist needs to go. However, from the side of our Q, Fanny should attack that Farsa. And to make matters worse for Blacklist, they usually like to rely on the Farsa that is roaming by level 2. So just being a very constant factor around the whole map. So if our Q can shut down that lane, that's already one tool that Blacklist like, like to use, just denied from them. And from there on, that is where they can actually try and contest the other neutral objectives. Because without mid pressure, and the Farsa cannot get into position to try and capitalize with that Feather Airstrike. And now that gives Blacklist a lot to think about because we know that the KDA machine, Haji, is good at protecting himself. But when it comes down to, again, that gold lane, it's also very possible that Vin just pressures Oheb all the more. 
Clay can do the same because again, I'm used to seeing Clay on heroes like Savior, on heroes with huge range like the Eve. But now he needs to get in your face a little bit more. So with that being said, I'm guessing even RQ might be trying out something new here, being a little more aggressive than we're used to. I think aggression is the key right here. If you take a look at RQ's side of the, the drop, right, the roster. Except for the Hilda, there's not a lot of hard CCs. The Glue will technically have a CC, no, no doubt. The Farsa has a lot of CCs. As this massive slow, there's a stun in the Brody, there's also a ton in Fragion too. And we haven't really been talking much about the Claude in the hands of Skylar, the gold laner for RRQ Hoshi. Very good friends with his counterpart in Blacklist International's Ohev. Arashi, talk to us about their head-to-head. -head. What do the stats say? The stats say that Skylar is a lot more aggressive, he does get more kills, but as far as GPM and damage per minute is considered, OHAP has him beat, so it does seem like RRQ, they're just more suited to this early game playstyle, and from the looks of it, it's gonna be an early game battle. Even if Blacklist is gonna drag this out to the late game, their only real late game pick is gonna be that Farsa, so it's gonna be very difficult for them to match out the composition of RRQ from you know, multiple aspects here. Is it going to be the DPS, the mobility? RQ just seems to have an upper hand when it comes to that. I feel like, Arashi, I feel like this is the, the stats that I like to see if, I, if this is my gold laner, right? I have a higher KDA, but with a lower GPM at a lower DPM. So basically, he is a lot more economical as compared to Oham. Oham, this shows that Oham needs more time to grow to output lesser KDA as compared to Skylar. So I think in this player head-to-head, -head, I'm leaning towards Skylar. And Skylar on the hero like Claude allows for that. Yeah. It's faster rotation compared to the Brody. It's much easier for him to be part of fights as he should be because again, we're expecting Albert on that Fanny to cut straight through. And I believe again, ladies and gentlemen, we're mere moments away from getting back into the action. And I'd like to thank everyone, Terima Kasi, Semua, for everyone here in Tennis Indoor Sinayan for being patient with us. Because again, just as like everyone, even those watching at home, we want to see this bout, we want to see this maybe go all the way. I mean, for, for both sure. sides, just, just to be clear, right? Definitely. And since we have some time here, mm -hmm. we have to talk again about the fact that Fanny is in the hands of Albert. This man is a mechanical genius, to oh, say yeah. the least. And they also have a Hilda on their composition. So now, if you look at the composition of Blacklist, there's not a lot of crowd control, at least not a lot of reliable crowd control, and that might be dangerous. Not a lot of instantaneous ways to stop Albert, and that could be dangerous. And oh, the crowd is feeling it. <laughs> oh, the spirit. Oh, I'd love to see the agents get in on it like the Kingdom are. It's no wonder that even RRQ Akira, in their opening year under that banner, just have fallen in love with the Kingdom with this kind of energy? Yeah, it's just crazy, right? On home turf, I think. Ooh. Well, you could argue that there's a lot of pressure on Blacklist International oh, as yeah. the defending champions. Yes. But there's also, I would say, an equal amount of pressure for RRQ themselves. Can you imagine RRQ losing to Blacklist in the home turf. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's, let's not go there, but yes. Relax, Cause, Jace, cause, relax. Because back home, because <laughs> back home, it's Blacklist who actually has this kind of re reception uh, when we play uh, in the MPL, right? So now the shoe's on the other foot. Let's next talk about the Roamers. Let's talk about Vin. Let's talk about the Queen. Oh, my Venus. I didn't expect all my Venus to have such a high KDA. Yeah, but I think that's because of the, the, the Ube play, play style, right? It's a lot easier to rack up the, the assists going in and the kill participation as well. Whereas Vin, more of a setup kind of tank. Your main goal is to set it up for your team, just catch one or two, and then after that, the rest follow up. Whereas, of course, you know, uh, damage taken per minute, definitely heavily leaning over to Vin. So I think it's just the contrast between these two play style of kind of roam, a support versus a hard tank engage. And to, to keep in mind that Oh My Venus plays a lot of utility, a lot of supportive roamers, whereas Vin likes being that front line, likes being that main engage tool. So it does get reflected, as Jace mentioned, in the damage taken. But of course, I think Vin is also very crafty with how he likes to engage fights. Sometimes he just tones down the aggression in order to be able to just go for a big fight and just surprise their opponents completely. We've seen it again and again. And of course, some people might say, oh, he hasn't been doing it recently, but there's nothing to say that he cannot do it today, yeah. right now.
And again, it's just the fact that the KDA is much lower means he's more willing to trade. Because when Oh My Venus falls for Blackest International, all the other cards just get laid out as well. And, yeah. and, and that's very important. That's key to how the Ube strategy works. Yeah, I like the fact that this is the hot topic, right? We're talking about the King's Final Gambit. It's also the Queen's Final Gambit, right? It's the battle of the King versus the Queen together as well. You lose your Queen in the chess match, that's it. It's really hard to climb back out. But as well, King is the one that kind of ends the game. But still, the, the value of this Queen may be the biggest double-edged sword of Blacklist International. So you're saying it's a Royal Rumble right now, Jason? It is. It is a Royal Rumble in the uh, Foreign Empire. In the what? In, in the Foreign Empire? Yeah, well, like they are that. on a different soil, right? So it is up to RQ to defend this ground. And boy, oh boy, slowly but surely, we are loading back into the land of dawn. Once more, we would like to thank everyone who's staying with us, everyone patient for the competition. Here we go. Let's get into game number one. RRQ Hoshi versus Blacklist International. Eyes on the early rotations. Where are junglers starting? Welcome to Mobile Legends. Just seem like both teams are trying to like make sure that their jungle is safe. We are of course on that Hilda. We'll be attempting to try and get a bit more value abusing that passive coming in from the Hilda. Yeah, so it feels like it is going to be a mirror matchup. Of course, the Fanny will prioritize the purple buff first, but instead of seeing Vin, you know, hard invading on the enemy side, it is Vin on the protective side. It's something, as I mentioned as well, all my Venus will need to stay around the mid lane, need to make sure that Haji gets to level 4 as quickly as possible. Yep, and for the first minute, 45 seconds, I'd say Vin could be a little more aggressive, and I guess that's why Haji and Omai Venus are staying here. That's the reason why they're trying to protect Wise and get him his buffs before, again, the much, much faster Albert can come in and try to contest. Mm -hmm. A lot of situation right here, but Vin actually gets jumped on, he gets stunned, won't be enough in this early game, and this is the problem, right? They. Uh, they don't really have any pressure in the side lanes to try and facilitate Vin trying to just disrupt by farming pattern and being on a Fredrin, he is, he can hold his own 1v1. Yep, I, I mean the best part about why he's going for the Fredrin jungler is that he's unfazed about the damage coming up from Vin. He, and not only just that, because all my Vinus is sticking around the mid lane, it's a lot of heal, but hold on a second, Elvis already spinning on the mid lane. Going over to the RRQ National. Hey, they were right, but this is what RRQ exactly needs to do. Small lead in a minute and a half, about 500 gold, but that's what you do with a lineup like this. We thought that the target was going to be Haji. It is Oh My Venus, bursted even through the ages. That mm -hmm. is unreal. Early game damage coming in from RRQ. It's not even level four. Yep, uh, something to note. We didn't see this in the prep or the draft going into this. A battle spell we rarely see in game, at least in the professional scene. Yes, indeed, folks. That is on my Venus on the Aegis. Oh, something down bottom here. I feel like it's just about ages, making sure that if Oh My Venus is able to survive even longer to sustain against the burst damage coming up from Albert, so that he could just spread out the heals. But something very interesting is Oh My Venus is one that lost uh, his life first. Haji only just hit level four at the same time. A lot of pressure coming in, Albert coming to the spin, but he will not be able to find anything as well. And what pause the split for now is coming in. Possessing Vin for now, on the middle, but here comes the call, all the at the same time. Punching in the back line, running out of the air strike, but will be in the push, Vin out of the jungle. Oh, that's a one for none. And that's our Q with a man down. They're pushing Clay away as they start this first turtle. Yes, Edward. Oh, no. He's actually putting a lot of pressure against Albert, but Albert's actually spinning around. Look at the... Uh, uh, oh, no. Albert, Edward just managed to push Albert away, giving Wise that turtle. That is absolutely fantastic. All right, you're just going to get something back. Edward is the main target here. Edward! Edward! And it's not over, both teams duking it out. And they're duking it out. It is all going, oh no, Albert, he got Ton right inside the turret, it's inside the brush as well, but he's able to cable away. Blacklist International, they stabilize, but RRQ on the other hand, they're, they're, they're not taking prisoners. Ooh, it's just a tough situation right here, and Albert is the one that needs to back off. Better airstrike. Both trading, but Feather Airstrike will not be able to make a big difference. And I think Wise actually stole the orange. Yes, he did. Looking at uh, the board here, Blacklist have gotten a small lead. Again, three minutes and a half. We're about a minute and 15 from that next turtle. Again, let's talk about the emblems here, because again, even the battle spells have gotten already pretty tricky. Rashi, talk us through. 
I mean, look at all that movement speed being prioritized. Rotations, rotations, rotations. <laughs> that is what both these teams like to use to get an advantage. And unfortunately for our Q, early on in this game, I don't think Faramis Cult Alter can give you that much value because you have you don't have the same amount of damage that you can dish back out. Whereas for Blacklist, having Haji on that Farsa just allows them to just destroy RRQ when they're clumping up in the jungle earlier. So they need to wait for a bit more power spikes to ensure that aside from having a second life, they have the damage to back it up as well. Yeah, and already it looks like RRQ are off tempo. It seems like Blacklist's response to this hyper aggression in mid has found its match. Wise gets pulled very very precariously because again, bigger presence from RRQ here in the mid, but Turtle is spawning in the top side. Oh, him pops a torn apart memory. Oh, I'm loving Blacklist positioning right now. I love Oh My Venus positioning. In fact, being in the mid lane means that you can actually rotate all the way up top, all the way up mid, all the way bottom. In fact, even the jungle, this global map presence of Oh My Venus is there, even with Albert's Fanny, wasn't able to match. This is why it's just so difficult. RRQ, they want to go for pickoffs, they want to abuse Albert on that Fanny with that early game damage. But when Blacklist clump together, fight together as a team, they have the Faramis as a quote unquote counter, but it's not working right now. Defender Ashtray will be able to land from Albert as Ooh. well. Albert will be able to cable all the way out back to safety, but that is a very low jungler. Albert needs to go back and reset. Blacklist, they have total control for now. Oh, they go ahead and start it. R7. It's only R7 first to the scene. R7, dipping his epic in the round. Skylar coming oh. in, but it's going to be R7. Going there, still will be able to come. Vin, Vin, whoa, also more oh, in the hands of Wise for now. But R7, look and destroy. Super annoying. And Hanji, taking the machine. Whoa, also more. And we're back now, trying to delay, trying to actually put down some damage. But look at Skylar, he's actually pushing down the turret at the same time. Kane already here, but Edward possesses R7 right there. But what are you going to do? There's a Skylar right there, right ready for you to pop. Edward, I'm a little bit afraid of you. You have to run away, my boy. But Edward, turn it around. A long form trade there by Agent Zero, buying time, buying map space for Blacklist International, keeping that fumble in, I guess, recoverable space, and they push down bottom. Arashi, how did Blacklist recover? They were just able to actually buy so much time in that fight, and their members were able to come back from the fight despite being taken out earlier on due to the big combo from RRQ. This is what RRQ needs to be very careful about. They have a lot of damage, but they need to make sure that they do not allow Blacklist to have multiple rotations of their mm -hmm. ultimates. Finn! Managed to catch, Oh My Venus has to pop the ultimate for now. It's gonna be Oh My Venus again, Shigandu Ola, but here comes Albert for the assassination! He finds the Queen! And we'll be able to zip and set all the way! RRQ on the roll right here in the KDA. Arashi, that's Oh My Venus third death away! V-Wise, of yeah. course, if you take down V-Wise, it's gonna respond. Oh, they're looking for something. He's trying to look for something. Skylar will be able to be MI all the way out. Oh, Edward, I don't think there's any kills for now they can do. Blacklist, they managed to stabilize for now. Arashi, so, talk to me. It's so dangerous right now, man. Our Q, I think once they have a bit more items, they can start being a lot more menacing to Edward, to All My Venus and Wise. This is what we've seen again and again. Very solid damage dealers from back far away, and three very solid tanky members in the front. This is what Blacklist is working with right now, and unless RRQ has the right items, for now, Blacklist still has the advantage. They can still bully RRQ away from the objectives. Yep, but it's gonna be being that engages all the way for the stay coming in, but it's gonna be Edward. Oh no, he stops Albert right now. It's gonna be Retrovando, but it is won by Wise. And now, and then there's gonna be Blacklist going to try to do something. R7 all the way in the back line, looking at Edward. He's actually super tanky right now. The is going to Why going in? The and oh. in. R7 needs to run away, and he managed to run away from the artillery strikes. Something tells me this is the ideal engage that Blacklist was looking for maybe two or three minutes ago. Yes. That's what they wanted to do in that other turtle up top, and now they're able to finally execute. They're able to pick off a Vin in that jungle fight, and afterwards, you can see that everyone just jumps on the opportunity. RRQ, they are forced again and again to back away, but now that Skylar has the Golden Staff, it's gonna be something that Blacklist needs to keep in mind, right? They are working against the clock right now. And with this 1,000 gold lead, their stats against Indonesian teams at M4 are looking a little better, right? The small lead in the mid game, eight minutes in, 1,000 gold ahead. They're currently sitting at zero and six against Indonesian teams. Their fate may change right here. They have, a they have a chance to just turn it around. 
but look at this EXP lane. It's just constant battling. And keep in mind, R7 was able to be so tanky there due to that vengeance. This will be a lot more annoying the longer the game goes. Once he has the concentrated energy, the other sustain items, is going to be near impossible for Blacklist to try and kill him without locking him down. Yeah, locking down, I think from the side of Blacklist right now, they're able to stabilize. Oh, man, man. he gets caught out. It's a whole gang, but Connors are coming in just in time to save time. Connors coming all the way in. Let's go, Volta, Wodoy, TN2, more than enough for our R2 to slowly take down Blacklist. It's gonna be just wise, he gotta be just Edward, and now Scott up, he gets caught. Baby, am I out? R7 on the chase right here. Wise looking in the mid, low, oh, Edward oh. just trying to kill, and then he will try to possess. Going in his mid lane, he got on top of R7. It's just a slow, slow death for the joy. Agent Zero gets his man, down goes R7. Something tells me, as we get more into the late game, there will be a cap, there will be a limit for RRQ's aggression, and then more and more Blacklist can find their way into this game. Ten minutes in. The longer the game goes, the more healing All My Venus will have, but also the more damage RRQ will have. So it's going to be a bit of a balance. It all comes down to execution. That blazing duet was just so devastating, and if Blacklist keep coming together, that's dangerous. Albert coming in will not be able to do the retro battle. Albert needs to tap out for now. It's going to be Blacklist going to be engaging on top of RRQ for oh. now. It's going to be Vin and first of all, the Haji. The heal coming in, manage to sustain for Blacklist to fight. Down goes the M-Series all-timer who hit his 500th assist in the M-Series overall. Vin sitting at zero. Five and five. The Hilda's doing its work, right? Looking at its items, he has physical defense in the Antikiras. He's building up towards magic defense. But I gotta say, against Blacks International, you're really only building against Oheb for physical. What's going on here? Well, they want to make sure that their main kickoff tool, right? The tournament memory cannot be used. Yeah. Oh! Strike! Elba gets deleted! Right off the map as he tries to get his purple buff. And that's not a good timing for RRQ. Arashi! Back to the point. Back to the point, man. The tournament memory is the main tool they're using right now. The other fighter airstrike is going to be difficult to deal with, but R7 is going to deal with the whole team of Blacklist alone. Yeah, but no one is that. It's going to get denied by the Oh My Venus actually here, but the Urban Mike Ventures is actually trying to take the shot. Hey, coming in with the car, making sure that the joy stays alive just a little bit. Finn, he finds the back line and he wipes out Ahaji at the same time. There'll be the trade for R7, but Oh My Venus, the damage is trying to come for RRQ. Blackness is trying to crack the bottom lane open. Oh, they pull that way! No. And the split split comes in right on time. The baby alien has to respond to the lane up top. And just like that, 11 and a half minutes in, 5k gold lead, Black International turning the map red. It's such a chaotic game, but at it the is. end of the day, Black is are the ones with the map pressure advantage. Now, once the Lords become even more important, they can use this to set up traps for RRQ, even though, in, in, in the way, right, RRQ has a better vision game, considering that they have a very strong front line. Let's, let's take a look by the instant, uh, at the instant replay by TikTok of that fight. Begun with R7, just going in alone, but afterwards, Vin was able to locate Haji in the midst of all the chaos. Unfortunately, though, it's all traded in for several turrets in the process. Every single time, if it's Vin for Haji, that's worth it for RQ Hoshi. But if R7 has to come along, that bundle package is way too much. Yeah, the burst damage is something that Vin has to be careful about. <laughs> Not a real one manipulation, mind you. The fair, the airstrike, you can see Vin has to tap out. Yeah, and just looking at the items, Arashi, I just noticed, man, the 4K gold lead, you can see a lot of it on the junglers. You can see it on Albert, you can see it on Wise. There's almost, what, a thousand and a half, two thousand in between them. Oh, oh here we go. Oh. Joy Vengeance instantly deleted. That is a very scary jungle for RRQ to be in. This is the traps you were talking about with that vision game. Tyler. But look at the split push coming in from RRQ. They're trying to find value despite being on the back foot. Yeah. And keep in mind, on the point of items, there is a Necklace of Durance already rushed to be built by Clay, but Blacklist, they seem to be just going for the base. But the airstrike will be used to zone on RRQ right now. Albert's trying to make a play. He has to recall back the base for now. It's going to be Skylar. Oh no, he gets caught on five wise, and that would be a monster kill. Give it over to the Blacklist jungler. And Blacklist, right now, they were into the fight. What can oh. you do? When you don't oh. have a damage killer, Wise will say no more clay. One for one, Skylar for Haji, and just like that, Blacklist makes a beeline for the Lord. Arashi can RRQ contest. Without Skylar, it's going to be a very tough process. He is the main damage dealer for the BPM members, unless they can pick up Ohem or Haji. It's going to be Albert. very, very difficult, but Albert seems to be trying to make an attempt. Vin, 
Just check in, and just like that, Blacklist, let's go. It looks like they want to make sure that it's a clean go. They want a full maybe 3v5, 2v5 if they can, but with the way Ark Yuhoshi are finding Haji and threatening to kill on Oh My Venus, it's not so easy. It's not really easy at all. Skylar could just BMI right in and all try the Blazing Duet, but then there's the Menace, right? Oh My Venus, it's the thorn against RRQ side. This is the difficult part as well. Blacklist, they are content just trading out damage because they have Oh My Venus on the Estes that can allow them to sustain through most of the damage. The same thing cannot be said for our Q. We have to rely on a Cult Altar, right? A more decisive use of an ultimate to try and gain advantage. Vin can sustain with the shield and the healing coming in from the passive, but it's one compared to five. And for Blacklist right now, they have all the map pressure in the world to work with as well. But right now, Albert is the one that's far away from this Lord. They might just wash it. Definitely Ashra going in at the same time. It's going to be the Lord that will be forgotten by the both of these two teams. Oh, already committed by that. The damage coming off from Clay. And R7 will be able to find it back by Woody's only hands it away. Wise will be down. Oh, trying to get you to do something, but he won't be able to do anything for now. R7 trying to tip his hand. The ultimate was already oh. activated for now. Albert, he got in for the assassination. And that's the jungler gone. The jungler advantage is going to RR2. Oh, have for Vin was a good trade, but oh. now Sky it's all R. going down. No, that's not a very good sign. RR2 does have the retribution battle right now. Stop the Blacklist trying to make something happen. They need to try to land the retribution at the very, very right time. He has the retribution and he gets the Lord. The baby alien scores it, and you hear the kingdom roar. RRQ running away. Edward and Omai Venus trying to look at least for a trade on the map. Blacklist still with a small lead, but RRQ Hoshi scores a Luminous Lord. They have caught up, and man, the building literally was shaking at that Lord take. That was way too close for comfort, and now Blacklist make a play for the purple. It does seem like Clay will be able to secure that buff. But now we have a bit of downtime, and let's have a bit of the items yet again. Glowing ones have been purchased by the side of RRQ, knowing that there's just way too many big dudes on the side of Blacklist International. But on the other hand, look at Haji. That's a lot of burst damage, Divine Glaive as well, and with the, with the truncheon, there's a potential for an outplay to happen here. RRQ need to be very careful in calculating how long the cooldown is on that item. Oh, I think they have eyes on where Edward is. Oh. Haji pops a Feather Dare Strike, pushing Oof. away Vin. And this is what's so hard when you're Blacks International, right? You have to manage the waves because Albert's much, much faster than a majority of you. And then now you have to play Honest. So far, Blacks International have kept a small lead, but now RRQ Hoshi, they've done so well to recover. The map is blue. I think it's the other way around. It's RRQ that's a little bit behind with the goalie. Black, they actually slowly claw all the way back, but it's going to be why R7 getting a bit of damage for here. Wise in the thick of thing. It's going to be all my minutes slowly healing up. Wise, like this international, they defended their throne for now. This is the limitation of this team composition. Sure, it's a lot of damage. Sure, in a big fight, it has so much combo potential. But when you're up against a Farsa, there is no high ground and there is no marksman to try and whittle down these turrets. So RRQ will be very, very reliant on winning fights with the Lord and then using the Lord to crack open the base of Blacklist. Now knowing this, Blacklist can very easily adjust and look for traps, opportunities, and loopholes to try and punish RRQ. Oh. Wise playing Whoa. with fire. R7 comes R7, in. R7, Haji has to fly away, but it's going to be R7. Oh. Activated the ultimate in the way. He's all the way in the back line. He's launching a low play. Managed to touch Kao after just in time, but it's going to be all my minutes actually desperately healing. The fight is using the melee. It's all that fight. They get taunted. Wise, wise, wise. Unstoppable, unkillable. Skala has to step out. Haji managed to take that Albert as well. Elwin is not going to allow her to get around away. Oh, is there to snide down Clay. The is... only problem is they left that wave up top. But again, a man down is a man down. Albert, 30 seconds away from spawning. Can he make it to this Lord fight? Are they going to start it immediately? They can just go for it if they really want to try and deny Albert. But that's still a risky play against Araki's composition right now. They seem to be going for that oh. mid base oh, target. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. But look at Clay. He's looking for an opportunity. This might be disaster for them. Oh, have going in. Clay was actually going to activate the Shadow Stampede just a little bit, try to zone it away. But Blacklist just needs to love to have that mid lane. And now RRQ's base cracked open. That's permanent damage Ooh. in mid, something that RRQ constantly have to tend to. And that's what Blacklist is avoiding. That's why they sent Edward back home. That's why Haji's paying attention to top lane. And Lord is a clean 5v5. I think RRQ just need to execute the fights cleanly, uh, cleaner here because earlier there's a lot of burst damage, there's a lot of potential, but when you funnel in one by one like that, it allows Blackness to deal with the threats 
individually. Whereas if you come at the same time, the Fanny, the Hilda, the Faramis, as well as the, the Claude, they have to actually uh, ration out their card control, and maybe some one of them will pull through and be the deciding factor for Araki Hoshi. Yeah, so they have to be very careful. Something tells me there has to be some specific way of cascading your skills for Araki Hoshi to get it right now. Vin trying his luck. R7 coming in with an angle. Vin eventually wants to fight as well to come on to activate at the same time. Hunter, he's been an airstrike. Trying to provide some high ground, some protection for Blacklist International. They shove RRQ out of the team fight. Just didn't work out. Now, yeah. Edward on R7. Let's see the relentless one not letting go. Team captain always pushing forward, oh leading with boots on the ground. This joy. Four and four and six. That is the KDA of a true warrior. R7 wants to force the issue. And look at that wave down bottom. It's a huge wave and R7 is pushing it out again, but Blacklist react almost instantly. R7 can flank right here. He does have a divine blade. That's a lot of damage available. Vin will be the one that falls. Oh. It is going to be the giant are going in the back time. Oh my Venus. He's actually trying to kill, but we're not going to be able to do so. I think it's a lot of fault. There's no damage at all for the time. They will try to fall this fight. Oh my goodness, the queen will fall. And now RRQ, full control of the map. That was the exact order that they were trying to pull through the past five, six minutes. That's it. And now RRQ are threatening an inhibitor push. It's going to be an inhibitor push right now. It's going to be Vin that's absorbing all the time. It's going to be cracked open from top side. But Edward, no fall. It's way better to the RRQ. That is every more time than RRQ. They are not going to give any more time. It's gonna be wise, definitely try to all, but there's so many people beside RRQ for now. Blacklist, Blacklist, they need to do something. What is it? Throwing punches? Not a good idea. It's RRQ. They stay number one. Man. Oh my god. The King of Kings draw first blood here in Tennis Indoor Sinayan. 1 0 in a best of five. That match did not disappoint, ladies and gentlemen, the kingdom roaring. They ask for more, and just like that, we've reached an all-time high PCU for M4. That's 3 million, 3.1 viewers all around the world. That is insane, man. You don't want to miss it. This is the match we've been talking about, and this is why. Action-packed gameplay throughout the whole game, and even then, you can still see the adaptations, the itemizations, the tactics being displayed by both these teams. Let me tell you how close this match is. For like good whole 10 minutes, the goal lead is like, what, in the three figures. After a while, Blacklist gained like 2.4k 2, 2 gold lead or something like that. And then RRQ, they found the right moment to scale out of control. And again, these two teams have been problem solving all throughout that close to 20 minute match, right? They've been figuring out how to engage, what works, face checking again, R7 did so much for his squad, and eventually they found the formula. Blacks International crumbles in the pressure of R7 and Vin, pushing forward constantly. And yes, they found Skylar several times, but in the end, all it took was one wipeout. The 1v5, the 1v5 was almost gonna work, but that was, what, three or four seconds short. It's such a tough situation, man. And again, this shows, again, the power of being the aggressor, being the proactive one in an engagement, because several times, even in the last team fight, Haji was, didn't even get to pop his winter truncheon. Everything happened so, so fast, and when you're the one initiating, you have a measure of control in your hands. I hear you, Rashi. And the whole stadium hears ya, because they are thirsting for more. I'd wish we could just go ahead and start the game almost immediately, but our teams, Blacks International and Yoshi, have to go back, have to reset, and more is on the shoulders of Blacklist. They lost game one. Let's talk about Battle Night, though. It goes live this January 21st. Expect loads of events and awards up for grabs in-game. First off, complete battle tasks in-game on January 21st to get a skin choice chest. You can choose the skin you like most from the chest. Aside from that, battle bonus awaits you on the same day. Play matches and you'll get team star protection for three matches, double star raising points, double protection points, double EXP, and double BP for five matches. We're not stopping there. Free access to all heroes and loads of epic skins will also be available that very same day. Save the date. Log into the game on January 21st. Enjoy the match and win tons of rewards. Let's all celebrate the M4 Championship together. Call your friends. Now, with that being said, 
I think it's gonna take very, very specific minds, very smart minds to break down exactly how Blacklist can come back or how Aroki Hoshi can just push the advantage. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Arashi and Jays, my name is Leo, let's go to the analysts. Thank you very much, Casters, and 3.17 million viewers worldwide witness R.Q. Hoshi drawing first blood against Blacklist International. Welcome to the Analyst Stand with me, LaFell, Naisu, Estrex, and gentlemen, let's start things off quick. Initial thoughts about the game. I mean, R.Q. brought a very scrappy guerrilla warfare type of style to that game, and today they were able to break the defense of Blacklist. I gotta say, man, that. R7, amazing game. The joy, side lane with the vengeance, really hard to deal with. And that's kind of the trend we've been seeing here, that teams that decide to place joy in that side XP lane. And that was a question a lot of us had, where does she work best? Well, I feel like now you could say the XP lane. Yeah, yeah, talking about the joy, let's look at the atomization as well as the draft, because the draft is actually very interesting, where Blacklist International, the way that they draft it kind of counters what Albert wants to do. They're gonna clump up, and oh my Venus, with the Aegis, is preventing the burst. But RQ still won Trex. I mean, something to really point out here, Clay with a full damage build here. Not only that, Sky, I mean, R7 as well, building a decent amount of damage, even some penetration there. And I mean, this is the thing. They were able to just shred through that typical blacklist bulkiness, and they were able to build this much damage because of Clay with that Cult Altar. It gave them just enough survivability to be able to last long against Wise and against Venus. I think just the fact that Albert, the way he played the fanny here, he started off strong, built that momentum, and as the game went on, everybody else was doing for him, and Albert kind of just swept in and was able to capitalize on a lot of those kills, and kind of, that was the trend for them. And at the same time, at some point, even though you have the Eztes, that signature pick there for Blacklist International, it just wasn't enough. And then there's so much chaos when you're talking about, I, mean, I think they had, what, two sprints on the side for RRQ, and that was really hard because you saw that last team fight where things just kind of sandwiched in. Yeah, yeah, looking at the stats, we can definitely see in terms of team fights, Blacklist International actually did a lot because the carry sandbag as well as the forgotten one is for Blacklist. So my being a seven total assists, wise, 253,000 damage taken, and OHAB dealing 110. Thousand, but looking at how it's been done, it looks like RRQ, they dealt enough damage to deal with, with whatever Blacklist has for them. I think something very important to point out here, though, is Skylar being the rich guy here. And in the beginning, we saw Albert, of course, popping off, right? But towards the end game, it started to shift to Blacklist, but eventually, Skylar comes online and is the determining factor in that final shred. And I mean, as a whole team, we saw the team fight, the team fight participation. They all did a great job. Honestly, talking about Skylar as well, something we didn't talk about is the Corrosion Scythe on the Claude. But before we talk about that, we gotta look at our MVP, where honestly, anyone from RK Hoshi deserves the most valuable player. But here, we gotta call for R7, the MVP with the EXP lane joy. And talk to us, Naisu. What about this MVP performance? Again, man, this was a crucial component to their success because like Trex, Trex mentioned, there was a point where Blacklist International had a great lead. I mean, they they almost had a point where they could have marched into the base of RQ here, but R7, the fact that he was able to create, create chaos in the back line of Blacklist International was really hard for them to deal with. And then again, you have just a lot being thrown at Blacklist International, not just that joy there, but still, even R7, you can see just how proactive he, were, he was here in the heat map throughout this, especially this crucial part of the game, that mid game into transitioning into late game to allow that chaos. And then, like Trex mentioned, when you have that Claude online, it's really devastating. Yeah, the heat map is very interesting because we got to talk about five minutes going into 10 minutes because R7 was the determining factor of changing the pace back to RQ's favor because in the early stage of the game, RQ tried really hard to engage against Blacklist International and Blacklist won that one. But during the turtle fight, R7, again, just zipping around everywhere, being very tanky and dealing a lot of damage. And I gotta feel like at least half the damage is from the Vengeance alone, really changed everything. Without R7 showing crazy mechanics on the Joy, I doubt RQ Hoshi would have won that match. Yeah, I mean, I feel like every player just played it textbook and 
from the beginning, this is about, what, five minutes in right here, we already see how R7 able to get into that back line. And if if Albert can't finish it, R7 will. Picking up that kill on Oheb, another one goes on to Albert. I mean, all around able to spread that kill distribution and make sure everyone gets their items in. I mean, that's the, that's the thing we're seeing, right? It's There was a very tanky, sustainable lineup that Black Desert International had, and RQ knew that. And as they transitioned to the game, it was like they were whittling down those health bars. They were getting through that armor, that kind of front line, and things just started to fall in place for them time after time. Looking at the highlight, I want everyone to pay attention because Black Desert International as well as RQ Hoshi both had amazing drafts. And honestly, both drafts kind of counter each other. So in this best of five, it looks like what we got to look out for is definitely the execution because RQ Hoshi should not win against Black Desert International lineup because they're denying they're the win condition from RQ, and yet they played around it because, sure, you guys can sustain, you guys can heal.